Hi, and welcome to Test Talk. I'm Ed Mobley, and I'm here with my colleague, Ashu Sharma. Hi. And this is actually a, a continuation of our series of, of videos around test automation. And today, we're going to talk about ROI-based test automation. In That's other right. words, assessing or, or making decisions based on the, the return on investment. Correct. That's absolutely right. So, so what is it? Just describe it. So at a very high level, um, the problem often with test automation is that, you know, uh, organizations will try to automate end-to-end -end all of the tests. And in doing that, they spend so much money that they're never able to recoup that when they're doing the automation. So the idea here is to intelligently determine what subset of tests need to be automated so that you get a return, a positive return on the investment. Yeah, and, and you make a really good point because we actually work together on a, on a client where because of the, the, the late adoption of an automation strategy, they're like, okay, we're just going to go in and we're just going to automate these big end-to-end -end business right. processes. That's right. And they spent a lot of money. It was unfortunately a failure. And it, it gave them a really bad taste That's right. a, a, about automation. And it, it was actually that, that situation that, that, That's right. that resulted in, I know, a lot of the work that, that you've done around this approach. Right, yep. Yep, it's actually a pragmatic approach, and you're absolutely right. That was emblematic of the problem where you were going end-to-end -end through a workflow, including situations that required a lot of manual processing, and then trying to automate that using handheld devices and other you know, screens that have a lot of moving parts. And trying to automate that, you just don't get enough return on the investment you're putting in. So the idea behind this approach is to break down what it is you're trying to test into script types. Mm -hmm. And each script type identifies a certain type of test that has commonalities. And then what you do is you identify that in a pilot environment that you run in the, in the client space itself. And the idea behind that, and that is, and the differentiator is, that instead of using industry averages, you're actually going into the client environment and you're looking at what, what is happening there in addition to the, you know, to the idiosyncrasies of all the machinery and the network and other things, what tools are being used, and then determining in that environment how long it takes to execute a certain type of script. And then what you do is you compare the manual run of that script versus the automated run of that script, and from that you run some analysis and determine which areas would make sense. Now that is part of what we call the costing model. That's the initial costing model, and there are other components to it as well. So the next component is then what we do, sorry, that's the sizing model rather. The next component is the costing model. So we determine how long it takes manual versus automated. The next step is then to determine over a test cycle, what is the cost of automation versus uh, manual testing? Because automation requires an initial uh, amount of effort before you can even start. So you, if you compared the costs of manual versus automation over a test cycle, you would find out that manual is actually cheaper to begin with, and there is a crossover point after which the automation is important. Being able to see that in the context of these script types is important, is very important. Yeah, because what you're, what you're pointing to is, is there are some things that it, it really doesn't pay to automate. Them, Correct. Either because they're, they're really not going to be used that much. That's right. Or, or sometimes and we've we've seen this in in certain applications. They're 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 system guided transactions. Correct. And the effort to condition the system to right. act predictably. I mean, it could be done, right? Just about right. anything can 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 be done in in theory, but right. it. It just doesn't make sense, and that's really what your what your model is. Is, is really right. the output, right? The output, exactly right. Um, the output is a um, you know graphical analysis of where you should automate in terms of script types. What over a testing cycle is the crossover point between um, the automation versus manual, and where you're going to start seeing the return on the investment. And then the final piece of this is a total cost of ownership model, where we look at not just the testing times, because that's not what we do, but we also look at day in the life factors. Even with automation, a human being has to go in and actually set up these tests and use certain types of tools in order to automate. And that is incorporated in this uh, total cost of ownership so that when you go to executive management and you make a case, you can say, given this set of tests that we have identified, which by the way, we would take some of them out based on the analysis, and you know, here's what the total cost of ownership is. Here's what you would have taken to do the manual. 
here's what it takes to do the automation. And so they can clearly see what the advantages of it and then use that in order to proceed. And, and so they, you know, whether it's proceeding with their current tool set or, or maybe they could even use that information to rationalize purchasing or, or acquiring They could, they tools. could, yeah, because, uh, you know, and, and actually that's a great point because typically when you're testing, you're not just testing in one cycle. You can have functional tests and then you can have, you know, uh, UAT testing and then you can, you can have uh, regression cycles, you know, uh, two or three regression cycles. So what you want to do really is look at the ROI over the entire test, uh, you know, end-to-end um, -end test cycle, which includes different components. And so in this case, what you can do is you can do analysis based on what, you know, what the costing is providing and then use a discounted rate uh, approach to determine what the NPV of the whole cycle is. And that can make decisions. They can help executive management make decisions on what additional tools they can use and bring into the mix to increase even more efficiency. And we talked about all the automation you know, tools and techniques that we have, and we can use that to do that, but you can still keep it all ROI positive. Yeah, and, and the model, what I like about the model is it's very flexible, because you can, particularly in that NPV calculation, you can interject a lot of uh, different values. I mean, in, in one of our other uh, automation videos, we, we were talking about the fact that one of the real values is, is not necessarily the amount of time you save just doing testing. Again, I mean, there, there's value right. there, but there's also a speed to delivery, speed right. to market, and, right. and so you can, you know, assign certain values to that and, That's right. and, and, That's right. and, and really help understand the, uh, the value or the return. That's exactly right. It's looking at the overall value and being very pragmatic about what you do. And again, the key point here is that um, the differentiator here is that we go into the client environment. We look at their scripts in that environment itself. So instead of us coming and saying, you're going to save 20 to 25 percent, which is an industry average, we go and we look at that. And in fact, Ed, what we've done is we've actually applied that at a client side, and we've had very good results uh, to where the uh, analysis of the pilot we did initially, which by the way, it takes about a couple of weeks for two people to do, so it's not a lot of effort initially to come up with this analysis. Uh, but basically, uh, the, the actual testing bore really well with what the analysis of the, uh, of the pilot indicated. So it was right on the money in terms of saving costs for the client. So it's a very uh, pragmatic approach, and, and you know, we've tried it, and it works. Yeah, and, and, and in that particular case, you, you already had uh, uh, test cases that were, were defined. But, you know, we have another video where we talked about uh, pairwise testing. So right. conceivably, you, know, you, you could work with a client where, where maybe they already have tests laid out. Maybe right. we can rationalize them first with a, a pairwise approach. Sure. You know, kind of, that's right. you know, truncate the, the, the number of, of tests. That's right. And, and, and that impacts, you know, the number of tests. And, that's right. And, and maybe if you have fewer tests, maybe there would be even an, an increased appetite to, to automate where maybe if you had a whole bunch of tests, right. you, you, you yeah. really didn't, you know, so maybe you can get, you know, more automation That's right. in, in that situation because, again, you've, you've got fewer higher value uh, tests. That's absolutely right. Again, at the end of the day, the point is that we come up with uh, an approach where we can go in front of the executive management of the client and say, this is the set of tests that you should do in order to make sure your automation is ROI positive. And to the extent that pairwise, uh, pairwise testing can reduce that number and give us an intelligent path through the testing, we should absolutely use that. And that would be incorporated as part of the initial sizing and costing model to come up with the final ROI numbers. Ashu, thank you very much for spending time with us. I mean, this was really an interesting discussion. Sure. And folks, you can find a uh, detailed uh, white paper at the link below. We definitely want to hear from you. We, we're definitely interested in some of your, your questions. Absolutely. I mean, we we yes. certainly uh, want to have a, a dialogue. So we, we really appreciate the time you've spent with us. Until next time, we'll see you on Test Talk.